How's it going, everybody? It's Ben from the Ben and Bev channel. Today we're going to be talking about Hawkeye Episode 4. Partners, am I right? Pretty cheap cliffhanger at the end of last week's episode. We start off the episode with both Hawkeye and Kate Bishop sitting down with Kate's mom and Jack. They're basically getting a talking to, like, two kids that have been grounded. Minus the one scene where Hawkeye is actually leaving the building where it shows Vera Farmiga's Eleanor approach him and threaten him to some extent. Kind of hinting that she may have a little more behind the curtain than he's aware, as well as giving a hint at how important Kate Bishop really is to her mother. And while this does seem to damper the relationship that that Hawkeye and Kate have moving forward since the mom doesn't really want Kate to be involved in any of this at all. It's an extremely dangerous lifestyle to be jumping into. We know that no matter what happens, the mission has to go forward and Kate's probably not going to be listening to any authority from her or Hawkeye at the end of the day. It's also a really nice scene where Kate sets up a small Christmas for Hawkeye since he is away from his family and she tries to follow along with the schedule of what his kids are doing at home with his wife to try and connect Hawkeye to his family despite being away from them at this point in time. And as the two are going down memory lane, it doesn't take long for things to get sad on Hawkeye's side of the story, especially when it comes to Nat. And as those details Details are brought up. You can actually hear the Soul Stone theme from Endgame playing in the background. It's actually used twice in this episode, once again at the end to kind of illuminate Nat's influence on Clint Barton's character as a whole. I thought it was a really effective use of that soundtrack, very similar to how they use different pieces of the soundtrack in WandaVision to pull emotion from places we didn't really know we had it. The familiar motif and cadence actually immediately brings a sense of remembrance and sadness to the scene. It does a really effective job at evoking emotion in what would otherwise be a really straightforward dialogue scene. The episode then continues with the two of them trying to figure out how exactly the Ronin suit ended up on the black market anyways. There's anything else from the Avengers compound that is also made onto that market. And the more into it that they look, the closer to danger that they find themselves. They very quickly run into Maya as well as another masked assailant. We're just gonna act like we don't know who it is. With all these different elements coming to a head, we actually get a really satisfactory rooftop fight sequence. One where Hawkeye's the center focus taking on two different foes and he's really just trying to keep Kate Bishop safe by projecting her off of the building itself. Not really sure how safe that is when it comes to falling and things like that, but I guess they got repelling arrows and stuff. That's fine. But no matter what Clint does to get Kate out of the fight, she becomes an essential piece to it, and in fact, without her, I'm not sure if he would have made it out of that conflict alive. But with this new sense of safety and the words from Kate's mother, you can tell that Hawkeye is really not a fan of having her as the sidekick at this point. This kind of ends with them butting heads and Hawkeye casting Kate away and telling her it's over with. Just go home. Get over it. Pretty dark ending. We got two episodes left. I'm not sure how they're going to reconcile things, but they were just starting to grow as a sidekick hero duo, so I definitely definitely think there's some hope for that there. And judging how Kate has been previously this season, I'm also going to assume she's just not going to listen to that advice and is going to show up on Hawkeye's mission one way or the other. She might even use her mom's security firm to track the guy as far as I know. Despite the weird information we just found out about Jack, her mom's boyfriend, and a couple other things this episode, it's not really that safe of an environment for her at home at the end of the day anyways. No. Overall, I'm going to say this week's episode is definitely a strong one, but I'm not sure if it's the strongest or if it's just a stepping stone for a stronger episode next week. It's a very interesting interim episode that we get to deal with a lot more development with our characters as well as some interesting details within the story. There's not as much action, but when the action is there, I think it's really impactful and we get a phenomenal fight scene at the end of the episode because of it. I also love the introduction of some more characters from the extended MCU and I'm really digging all the emotional stuff they're doing between Kate and Hawkeye, the relationship of his tragedy and how she's trying to just understand him and what exactly this superhero lifestyle is and how it's going to be affecting her if she truly wants to go down this same path as him. path that basically makes him always have to manage with loss and grief. Something we're not really sure if Kate Bishop is ready to dive into head first yet, but this season is doing a great job of developing that conflict within her. I'm really excited for what they're going to do next week, especially with more subtle hints at Uncle as well as the new threat that popped up at the end of the episode. My guess is as good as yours on how this series is going to be ending, so uh, yeah, we'll see you next week. I totally almost forgot, but at the beginning of this series, all the episodes were a lot longer, but as the episodes have been going on, they've been cutting down in runtime, and this week's episode was definitely the shortest so far at 40 minutes, including credits and recap. What's the point of doing long form if it's not consistently long? What did you think about Hawkeye's fourth episode? Let us know in the comments below. We'll see you guys next time. Ben and Bev, out. Yelena Bolova.